Uh, Brandon Johnson. Y'all know Anton usually refers to Brandon Johnson as Mayor Mohawk. <laughs> Mayor Mohawk is in the building. Shout out to Brandon Johnson. Brandon Johnson. <sighs> Remember when we was holding Tiffany Hingard accountable for her hair and makeup? Well, they saying that Brandon Johnson was using campaign funds illegally for his Mayor Mohawk hair, makeup, his team, and he was out here like a bad bee. Shout out to the bad bees, Brandon Johnson. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. So they said Brandon is out here finessing. Uh, but meanwhile, before we even get to Brandon Johnson, let me tell you and let me show you what's happening in the city uh, while he was getting his hair and makeup did. Hair done, nails done, everything did. Topping the 10 tonight, a look at summer gun violence in Chicago. We have talked a lot about the new plans from the city, police and community leaders working to keep everyone safe, but it was a violent weekend. At least 44 people were shot across the city and police say they are investigating eight murders, but we know gun violence is much more than just a number. Our Jermont Terry live at CPD headquarters for us tonight, sharing the story of one of those victims. Jermont. Joe and Erica, this woman recently left Chicago and just moved back. Now her first summer back, she is the face of gun violence. My back is like a little stiff. It's like my lower back. At 23, Dominique Tosin Montagano never imagined she would be in such pain. This is Listen, I don't care if you look like trippy red. I don't care if you got green hair. I don't have, care if you got green eyebrows. Nobody should be subjected to getting hit with random bullets while you in Chicago standing around on somebody else's porch just randomly. Nobody, I don't care what you live your life like. I don't care if you sassy, ashy, classy. Nobody should be subjected to the level of gun violence that's happening in Chicago. Whether we agree with her hair color or not. Not the summer. It's not want. the summer I want. Two bandages to her back. These are both of the ones. And leg cover gun wounds. They are injuries from when Dominique stood on the friend's porch over the weekend near 56 in Elizabeth in Inglewood. Police say at least one gunman, possibly more, opened fire on a group of about 10. The crime scene shows countless evidence markings on the block. Then the shots let off and everybody started ducking, got behind the um, concrete. And that's when I felt that I'm like, my back is bleeding. Her friends let Dominique know she was shot. Another guy was shot in the hand, a third person on the porch hit in the arm by what's believed to be random gunfire. I thought at first like my back was hurting from the door. My back was hurting because I got bullets in it like, or bullets were coming out of it, like that's crazy. Dominique is one of 44 people shot in Chicago over the weekend. Eight people were killed by the ongoing gun violence. 44 people in your city and y'all down over 2,000 police officers. We get there. That could have been me. And I don't think a lot of people be understanding stuff like, y'all have mothers too. What are y'all doing? She's a part of a troubling statistic she never wanted to join. She tells me those with the guns simply don't care. We can sit up here, we can protest, we can walk the streets, we can do anything. It's not working. We're trying. I don't think the police can do anything, the mayor can't do anything. It's only getting worse every year. And it's Oh, we know what the mayor doing here. You want to know what the mayor doing? All right, baby girl, I'll show you what the mayor got going on. While you was over there getting your back blew out, <laughs> that didn't come out right. But don't worry about it. We're going to get there. While you was over there getting your back blew out, Mayor Mohawk, now listen, I want y'all to look closely. Look at, the, look at the level of effort and detail. I know that this was an off day. You can see the stubble around his face, meaning that, um, you know, he didn't get his hair and his makeup did at that particular time. But I want y'all to pay attention to everything that's going on here. Look at the context clues. You got the gray, that's the authentic part of his beard. The black, you get that colored. Cool, ain't nobody tripping about it. I get my beard colored too. I wanna get the grays out, gotta keep the black popping. Uh, then he gets a fade up on the sides. Uh, he get his little jerry curl, his S curl going up. Just for me. Um, and then he get it going back like this. And then he make, he make sure that the Mohawk's still going up. So he's largely known as the mayor of Chicago, but we over here at the Millionaire Morning Show refer to him as Mayor Mohawk, okay? And so 
I thought that he just had a good, you know, his barber or he just had a good, you know, connection. That's how he's been rocking for a long time. But apparently he got a whole makeup artist and they leveraged campaign funds in order to keep him fresh. Take a look. We start here at 5 o'clock with questions about Mayor Brandon Johnson using campaign funds to pay for hair and makeup expenses for himself and other people tied to his campaign. The Chicago Sun-Times first reported that Johnson has spent more than $30,000 in 15 months. Election lawyers disagree if it's lawful. NBC5 political reporter Marian Ahern joining us now with reaction. Marianne? Allison, election law does not mention specifically hair and makeup. So depending on whom you ask, <laughs> there is disagreement whether it's legal. He's not the first to use campaign funds this way, but in Johnson's case, he's using those dollars not just for himself, but others too. Last August. Yo, this could possibly be um, fraud. Honestly, like this could be laundering money. Who spends $30,000 on hair and makeup? $30,000 on hair and makeup? I don't know if y'all are familiar with the laws and what it is that you can write off as expenses or how you can apply campaign funds or even funds for your business, but this is unreasonable. It doesn't even make sense. Honestly, it does not even make sense. When we spoke to Mayor Brandon Johnson in a one-on-one -on -one interview, his makeup artist prepped him before we asked questions. Johnson is paying his makeup artist through his campaign donors. Likewise, this hair... Now y'all gonna be feeling some type of way. Don't mess up the black woman's money. Hair salon in Austin is also paid with campaign funds. It's just three doors from his former county commission office. Johnson has expensed more than $32,000 from January of 2023 through the end of March of this year. Campaign records show the makeup artist was paid $28,000, the hair salon $4,000. I would be hard pressed to say grooming. $4,000 to, to somebody for a haircut? Yo, we, our system is so broken. Our public politicians is out here running around like bad bees. They are, they are out here like, like they rock stars. Politicians have now become rock stars. Hair and makeup for a politician, for a public servant. Think about that for a minute. For a public servant, hair and makeup. And let's keep the energy across the board. The same thing that we talked to talked about Tiffany Henyard for, as far as her having her little wigs done and still looking like Lil Wayne, is the same thing that we need to be holding all of our politicians accountable for a public servant needs hair and makeup he is part of your governmental uh, functions that's not a function of government to look good bert olson is an attorney who specializes in election law so does michael dorf the key is the law does not prohibit uh expenditures for grooming expenses and it is absolutely clear Grooming that how you look is at least as important as what you say in any political situation. The Illinois State Board of Elections says, quote, if you're making an appearance as mayor of Chicago and you hire a makeup and hair artist for the event, that would most likely be a legitimate use. But if you're using them for a strictly social event, there might be a stronger grounds for a complaint. You also can't pay more than fair market value for goods and services. During former Mayor Lightfoot's term, she expensed $8,000 total for hair and makeup. <laughs> oh, you got to pick a struggle, fam. Hey, we not going to go there. Shout out to Mayor Beetlejuice. To her campaign funds. Is, how, is Illinois completely corrupt? Is everything in Illinois completely, completely corrupt? We going to get there. We got a whole nother mayor that's in a whole nother city that's right next to Tiffany Hanger. They corrupt too. They say that she worse than Tiffany. We going to get there. If I was to pick a side here, I'd pick a side of being on the conservative side, following the letter of the law 
and not trying to stretch the law. The campaign money was used not just for Johnson's makeup. In a statement to the Sun-Times, his campaign spokesman says the expenses were for the mayor and individuals associated with the campaign for public appearances, events, media segments, and other availabilities. It's a political problem for him. It's a public relations problem. I don't think it's a violation of the Illinois election code. We reached out to the mayor's office who told us contact his campaign office. That spokesman did not return our call. So Mayor Mohawk is out here parading around like a bad bee, getting to the bag and finessing people. I don't know, man. I mean, listen, if they gonna vote you in, and this is what they standing on. Who am I to complain and who am I to debate about whether or not you can be out here spending $30,000 in a year on hair and makeup for you and your friends? I guess Chicago, li listen, maybe we should complain about the people that donated to your campaign in order to be able to get you to do this. I don't know. I just don't even like the idea that people can donate to people. And it's, this whole system is just messed up. We need a redo. We need a redo. But shout out to Mayor Brandon Johnson for continuing to finesse. Uh, let's move.